Okay, so we're already in this section of your book, okay, when we're talking about quantum mechanics. We learned about the electron configuration and quantum numbers, okay? So now we're just going back there and basically figuring out how we know all that stuff. Like I just told you about energy levels and sublevels and orbitals. Okay, what is the experimental evidence that we have to back up all those claims? We've got a lot of theoretical claims in quantum mechanics. What experimental evidence do we have to back that up? And it turns out everything we know about the electron um, from an experimental standpoint is through its interaction with light, okay? Through the interaction with light, through atoms' interaction with light, how they emit light, how they absorb light, okay? That's how we know, all right? And so uh, part of the uh, properties of light is that they have wave properties, okay? And so we're gonna first start talking about waves, start, then we're gonna start talking about light, and then we'll link them together with how we know, uh, uh, what we know about the electron, okay? So let's draw a wave, okay? So waves travel, okay? So we got an axis of propagation. All right, here's my axis where the wave is traveling. All right, and then the wave is whoo, going up, going down, going up. Okay, not too bad, not great. All right, so what do we need to talk about a wave? Okay, some uh, properties and characteristic of waves that we'll need to know and use you is the wavelength of a wave. And the wavelength of a wave is the distance between two exact points on adjacent waves. Okay. And we abbreviate wavelength with the Greek letter lambda. So that's a lowercase lambda. Does that look like a lambda to you? Yeah. All right. So I that's what we. Just say well, we got it. You want to write out wavelength all the time, don't you want to? W. Well, that's work. So you can't use. Okay. It's not me. I didn't make this up. <laughs> All right. Okay, so I uh, drew from the two crests or the two maximas of the waves. Um, it can be from any two points, okay? So it can be from a trough to trough, from the leading edge to the leading edge, and the back edge to the back edge, any two points. And if this was a regular wave and drawn better, the wavelength would be the same distance, no matter where you uh, measured it from. Okay. Um, the amplitude, the height, from the axis of propagation to the maximum or the minima is called the amplitude. All right, and so these uh, properties of the waves have physical manifestations um, that, re that you know, we experience, okay? With light, the wavelength, for visible light, the wavelength determines what color the light is, okay? Shorter wavelengths are blue, longer wavelengths are red. In the middle are your oranges and your greens and all those, okay? The amplitude largely, de largely determines the brightness of the light, okay? So the brighter the light, the higher the amplitude of the light, okay? So high, lots of light hitting my hand now, less light hitting my hand now, lower amplitude, even less light hitting my hands, but you're just gonna have to, believe me, less light, okay? So that's the amplitude. Now in other forms of waves, they take on, they determine different properties. If you're talking about sound waves, uh, the wavelength, what does that determine? Anybody know? The frequency of the pitch, how uh, high or low the sound is, that's the wavelength, okay, how far apart the waves are. And the amplitude would determine the volume, how loud or soft it is, okay? And so those are just physical manifestations that, uh, you know, physical properties that come out of these uh, measurements. All right, so there's another 
property of waves that's going to be important, okay? And it is the frequency. And the frequency is abbreviated by the Greek letter nu. Got anything to say you want to comment? Uh, again, that's me. All right, it's new. All right, and so that's my new, it looks like a V-ish. Okay, it looks like a fancy V, that's why I call it. Okay, so if I, and we will need to, if I do a V, that's a V, okay? But if it's like all fancy, like it's going out, it's Friday night, that's new. All right, so that's a V. And I don't know how to, uh, I don't know how to write V other than V. So V equals V, like that's a V. All right. Kind of seems silly now that I wrote it like that, but I wrote it. Got to go with it. All right, so what is frequency? All right, so um, uh, easy way to talk about frequency is think about water waves. Okay, another way. So, okay, let's, so let's draw some water waves. Huh? Huh? Not as good as my balloons, but pretty good. All right, so we were watching the water waves at the beach. That's a buoy. I'm not going to brag about my buoy. Okay, that's a buoy. All right. What's that? Is it underwater? Some of it's underwater, not all of it. I mean, there, some of it floats, some of it sinks. You don't see the bottom. All right. All right, so if you're sitting there and you count how many waves pass that buoy, over a given time period, you're calculating the frequency of the waves, okay? So the frequency is the number of waves that, uh, you know, pass a given point during over a period of time. in a given time. <coughs> all right. So now we got to think about units for frequency, all right? Um, so at the you know basic level, okay, we can just say it's waves per unit time. And it turns out most waves are pretty fast, and so we're gonna measure the time in seconds, so waves per second. Uh, you also see this uh, written as cycles per second, because sometimes frequency isn't used just for waves, um, it's used for um, like computing power, okay? processing speed, cycles per second. And then, most of the time we just get lazy and say, oh, we know it's waves, we know it's something, so we just write it as per second, or one over second. 1 over second, or reciprocal seconds. And so we could even write that as also as s to the minus 1. So per second. And then, like a lot of times uh, happens, you know, somebody gets pretty famous, you know, figuring all this stuff out for us so we get to learn it. And so the units was named after someone. Does anybody know what the unit uh, for frequency is? Not Tesla. Hertz. Hertz. There we go. Hertz. H Z. Okay, so that's Hertz. All 
All right, and so you will, in chemistry, these are the ones we use in, in physics. Either just reciprocal seconds. I like reciprocal seconds because you get to see the seconds. You can worry about canceling them out, but you also see it in hertz. <laughs> so a non-wave um, frequency that you also that you hear, uh, you'll see out there is that if you're in the if you're in the market for say a new computer or a new cell phone, all right, you might be and you want to get a top line. You might be interested in the processing speed of the um, whatever the uh, what's it called the chip. No, the chip, the processor. Okay, like your Intel or your AMD or whatever. Okay, and you'll see something like 2 gigahertz, 1.8 gigahertz processing speed. So for the computer, that's doing 1.8 or 2 billion computations per second. So pretty fast. All right. Other uh, places you, this is it's there, but you don't see it enough. Okay. All right. And a great example of this is if you, if in my car, all right. Right above the radio, so radio stations. Okay, what's your favorite radio station? 99.1. .1. All right, so 99.1 what? That's a number. <laughs> FM, it's an FM station. Okay. Um, it's actually, it's megahertz. It's megahertz. But radios never show the units. So on my radio in my car, minus one units written that on my car. No, I didn't really. Okay, but yeah, so it's megahertz. And of course, uh, AM stations are kilohertz. So that's the frequency of the radio waves. All right, so we got uh, wavelength, we got amplitude, we got frequency. All right, what else do we need to know? Well, the frequency could change depending on how fast or slow the waves are moving. The slower the waves, the less they will pass that point. The faster the waves, the more they will pass. Okay, so that can impact um, your frequency. It turns out when we talk about wave or light waves, uh, we're talking about the speed of light, and that is a constant. Okay, the speed of light is constant. All right, and we even abbreviate it as C, so that we know that it's constant, it's not changing. Okay. And uh, it's a little bit under three, it's like 2.99 something times 10 to the eighth meter per second, but I just like to use it with three sig fig, 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. That's the speed of light. All right, so since, it's, uh, <coughs> since the speed of light is constant, not changing, it turns out that um, um, so, since the speed of light is constant, if you know the frequency of the light, you can calculate the wavelength and vice versa. Because let's think about our units, okay? So our units of speed are meters per second. And so what would those units be? So it would be a meter times a one over second. So it's the speed of light is equal to the wavelength with units of distance times the frequency. So now we got a new handy dandy equation at our fingertips. That is a fancy V. Oh. That's a, you know, that's supposed to be a fancy V. But that's our new equation, which I think I was supposed to talk about here. But I talked about it here, so we're already doing this. We're one slide ahead. We're go getters. All right, all right, so we're talking about waves, okay? We talked about water waves, okay, that's waves of water. Sound waves are just waves in the air, air molecules waving. What's waving? What's the, what are the waves in light, okay? Well, a lot of times we also call light electromagnetic radiation because light consists of actually two types of waves, okay? Waves in the electric field and waves in the magnetic field of nature, just fundamental parts of our nature. Um, that are orthogonal to each other. So electromagnetic light are electric are waves in the electric field and magnetic field. OK. 
consists of waves. electric field and the magnetic field. Okay, and so the electric field is uh, signified as E, the magnetic field. Magnetic fields are often uh, symbolized by B. Okay. Why not I don't know. These people. Okay. And so that's what the waves are for light. Now, of course, when we think of light, uh, we typically think uh, visible light, you know, what we can see. But as you probably know, there's lots of different types of electromagnetic radiation. And we kind of carve it up based on how it's used. Okay, visible light, oh, we can see it. Let's call that visible light because it's visible. All right, there's other types of light. There's no, it's nothing different. So what's another type of electromagnetic radiation? Infrared. infrared, okay. There's infrared, we can't see that. You know, there's nothing different about infrared light and visible light except for the wavelength. The wavelengths are different. Infrared light wavelengths are longer. And the other big difference, of course, is we can't see it. The cones in our eyes just don't, those molecules don't respond to those wavelengths of light. Okay? But they're there. Okay. And so that sets up the electromagnetic spectrum. Here's where this is going to come from. So the electromagnetic spectrum is the, uh, all the spectrum of light. Okay? So the visible is a very small section, actually. But that's what we're used to, okay? Visible spectrum, all right? So it's cut off here, all right? So this is, you know, from your red, excuse me, from your from your red to your blue, all right? And then you got some oranges, you got some yellows. Oh yes, I'm going all out. Greens and send then some more blues. All right, so there's your visible spectrum. Okay, and so this is about 400 nanometers to about 750. About. All right. And then, of course, you have two different directions. You can have uh, shorter wavelengths and longer. Mm. I did want to go that. Yeah, yeah. Good, good catch. Do 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 do. Yeah. So red is like 750. And then the blue wavelengths are like 400. All right, so right next, right below 400 nanometers, that's where the UV um, or ultraviolet spectrum starts. Okay, and I don't know all the wavelengths, you know, the UV when it cuts off. And then even within the UV spectrum, it gets cut up a little bit more. You'll hear about that UVA, UVB, UVC, and how they're, some are more dangerous to um, uh, your skin than others. Okay. And then a little bit uh, shorter than UV. You've probably had some irradiate you at some point in time to uh, maybe look at your bones. Maybe your teeth. X-rays. X-rays are next. Smaller wavelengths. And then gamma rays. Gamma rays are the smallest. Yeah, that's uh, you're thinking of nuclear uh, radioactivity, radiation. But gamma is a type of radiation. So yeah, gamma rays are often emitted from uh, Radioactive isotopes, 
Okay? We actually, they're useful. They're used in cancer treatment. You ever have radiation therapy? They use a radioactive isotope that emits gamma rays and uh, to uh, treat cancer cells or you know, eradicate them. They also made the Hulk. So there's that. Okay, so cancer treatment and the Hulk. All right, longer wavelengths. The first one up is IR, infrared. Okay, you're actually emitting some IR right now. Okay, so your molecules don't have enough energy to emit visible light, but they are emitting infrared. If we turned off all the lights and put on some infrared goggles, I'd be able to see you because you're emitting infrared light. Lasers is just a broad term for, they can be any wavelengths of light. So you can have visible light lasers, like you know, green laser pointer, red laser points. You can have UV lasers, infrared lasers. Yeah. That is just the, essentially the, um, the irradiance, so the irradiance level, the amount of light that they output. Okay, lasers put out a lot more light than say your standard bulb, or even you know, LED bulb. Okay. Shorter wavelengths than IR. All right. Anybody hungry? Anybody could go for a hot pocket? How are we going to cook that hot pocket? Microwaves. And actually, the first laser that was ever produced was in the microwave. Uh, wavelength regime, and they called it a maser, microwave laser. Mm -hmm. That's like pretty cool. That's almost like the Star Trek phaser. Like, come on, like that's cool. That's amazing. You can cook a lot of hot pockets with a maser. All right, and then there's one more that's even longer than microwaves. Microwaves are about a centimeter. I do know that, or not all of them, but they can be around centimeters. Okay. No, be longer than that. We talked about them. What type of, there's one more type of electromagnetic radiation. Oh, radio. radio, yep, good, radio. All right, they're really long. So your FM radio stations are about a meter long. Okay, that's how long the wavelengths of that light is. Okay, visible, we're in the nanometer range, IR, centimeters, you know, millimeters, microwave centimeters. Um, and then UV is much smaller, X-ray is much smaller. All right, so one of the relationships that we uh, will need to come up with is what's the relationship between uh, wavelength and um, frequency? And you're probably wondering, like, why did I start with a longer over there and then I'm going left to go shorter? Because this, this is how electromagnetic spectrums are written. You're always going to see it in this order. And it's actually based not on the order of the wavelength. It's actually based on the order of the frequency. Okay? So what's the relationship between uh, frequency and wavelength? Well, we can derive it. We can figure it out from our new handy-dandy equation, C equals lambda nu. All right, so C is going to be a constant, all right? That's not going to change. C is not going to change. So what happens to the frequency of light if we go to this end of the spectrum, if we go from visible to IR to wavelength? So the wavelength's going up. What happens to the frequency to keep C constant? It's going down. It's going down. So as wavelength goes up, frequency goes down. And then at this end, as we go from visible to UV to X-ray to gamma, the uh, wavelength is going down, smaller and smaller. So to keep the same number of waves passing that point um, constant, you know, the speed constant, the number of waves have to increase. So frequency goes up. All right. So if you know wavelength goes down, frequency has to go up. What type of relationship is that? Directly proportional or inversely proportional? Yeah. Directly proportional. Okay. So wavelength. What? What? I heard mixed. I heard. I heard. I heard what I wanted to hear, but I need to make sure we're all on the same page. Direct. I said direct. Okay. So one's going up, the other one goes down. Are they directly proportional or inversely proportional? Inversely. Inversely proportional. That's how we'd say that. Okay. If one goes up, the other one goes down. That's an inverse relationship. Okay. Wavelength and 
and frequency are inversely proportional. Have we, had, have we talked about how we'd write that, uh, you know, symbolically yet? Okay, no, we haven't. All right. So we'd write that symbolically by saying that wavelength is proportional. So that's the Greek letter alpha. It does look like a fish, but without the tail and without the smiley face. So without that, it's a fish. Okay, so the alpha sideways ribbon, maybe. Okay, to the inverse of frequency. Okay, so wavelength is inversely proportional to frequency, or we can put it frequency is inversely proportional to wavelength. Either one. All right. So what's that mean? So as we go to shorter wavelengths up here, we're going to higher frequencies. And as we go to longer wavelengths, we're going to lower frequencies. And that's why we typically start over here at radio, because this is the lowest frequency that's over there. Gamma rays the highest frequency. All right, so I know you. you. We've got this handy dandy equation, C equals lambda nu. You want to take it for a spin, don't you? You want to take it for a test drive. All right, let's do that. Okay, what is the wavelength of light in nanometers of a scanner in a grocery store if the light has a frequency of 4.62 times 10 to the 14th hertz? Okay, so it's, uh, you know, you've, you've seen the scanners, those red lights, okay, that's visible light. And visible light, just by chance, you know, it's really convenient to put it in terms of nanometers, all right? So we usually put it in nanometers, all right? So let's calculate the wavelength of that scanner. Doesn't that sound like fun? I won't look up. All right, so our two things we're going to need is our new handy-dandy equation, C equals lambda nu, and... <coughs> The speed of light constant, 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. 4.62 times 10 to the 14th hertz. What's the other unit we could use for hertz? S to the minus 1, and that's what I do like to use a lot better, S to the minus 1. Whoever wrote this should have wrote S to the minus 1. But you'll see hertz a lot. But the seconds will help us with our units, OK? All right, so what is the wavelength? What are we solving for in our equation? The wavelength, the lambda, OK? And so we just solve for that. Lambda equals C over nu. And our speed of light is 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters meters per second divided by what's our frequency 4.62 times 10 to the 14th reciprocal seconds all right what do we get when we take 3.00 times 10 to the 8th, divided by 4.62 times 10 to the 14th. Six point four nine times ten to the seventh. Oh, wait, 
Negative six? Negative seven. Negative seven? Okay. Meters? Meters? Those meters. All right, so yeah, seconds cancel out. That's why I like to keep it in seconds, reciprocal seconds, rather than hertz, so I can really see that my meters come out. All right, so we're done, yay. Oh, yeah, we said nanometer, dang it. So close. All right, so here we just have to remember, I want to convert 6.49 times 10 to the negative seventh meters into nanometers. Now I just need to remember how many nanometers are in a meter. What do we? Nano's nine, 10 to the ninth, yes. Yeah, so the way I wrote it, I'd use 10 to the ninth. You could say 10 to the negative ninth meters is in one nanometer, but I wrote 10 to the ninth is in one meter. All right, meters cancel out, good. Six hundred and forty nine. Six hundred and forty nine nanometers. All right. So now the next time you're in Publix, okay, you can tell them, hey, that's six hundred and forty nine nanometer light you're working with. They'll be impressed. No, they never are. They should be, but they never are. Every time I tell them, they're never impressed. I even ask them, do you want to know what wavelength of light that is? Like? They say no. I tell them anyways, because I know deep down they want to know. Okay. All right, so that is how we use that equation. I'm just being helpful. <laughs>